In addition to learning how to use the scanning tools, it is important to use them in the correct order. Step 1. Set highlight and shadow. Step 2. Adjust contrast and brightness. Step 3. Fine tune color. And last, apply unsharp mask. I have found this to be an efficient workflow that builds upon each step. I will outline each of these steps in more detail. Try to make most of your global tonal corrections in flex color. While working in flex color, you are working with raw data. Tonal adjustments downstream may incur some data loss. To set your highlight and shadow point, I will use the histogram tool. Select the histogram icon from the main window. The histogram window contains a graph that shows the tonal information and range of your image, with shadow information on the left and highlight information on the right. It plots the levels from 0 to 255 along the horizontal axis and the number of pixels at each level along the vertical axis. This is a composite of the red, green, and blue channels. First I select the Auto button. This finds a highlight and shadow point based on the histogram. The screen will reflect the new highlight and shadow points. I can manually adjust my shadow and highlight points by selecting the triangles and moving them with my cursor. Once a slider has been selected, I can use the arrow keys to make precise adjustments. Holding down the control key while using the arrows causes the sliders to move in large increments. Use control tab to move between the highlight and shadow sliders. You can also use the eyedropper tools to manually set your shadow and highlight points. The middle eyedropper acts as a gray balance tool. If you have a neutral gray area in your image, you can use this tool to color balance your image. Try to locate a neutral gray object. Choose something that falls somewhere between the midtone range. In this case, I'll select the knife. To judge if your selection falls near the midtone, monitor your red, green, and blue values as you float your cursor near the area. Midtone values fall between 120 and 180. Over this area, my RGB values are currently reading red 166, green 165, and blue 169. Don't be concerned if they're not exactly the same. Here is another method to judge if the selection falls near the midtone. In the histogram window is a vertical dotted line. Notice as I move the cursor to different areas of the image, the dotted line indicates where the pixels fall on the histogram. Your midtone will fall somewhere in the middle between the highlight and shadow points. Be sure to experiment with different gray balance points until you find the right look and mood. Next is Show Final Values. This shows the histogram as it appears after the shadow and highlight points have been applied. This is helpful for checking if you have clipped highlight or shadow information. Selecting Keep Cast preserves the color cast in the original. By default, the Auto button will remove color cast from the highlight and shadows. For example, when scanning a sunset image, the auto function will turn your golden highlights to white. Selecting Keep Cast will preserve them. These triangles on the right of your histogram are your output values. These allow you to set the output values and compress the tonal range of your image. For example, if your press can hold a 5% dot, you would set your output levels accordingly. Consult your printer for the proper output settings. The Reset button removes all highlight, gray balance, color cast, and shadow settings. It only resets functions found in this window. At the bottom left corner of the histogram window is a triangle. Select this triangle to show each color channel individually. Note that in addition to setting shadow and highlight points, you can control the midpoint of each channel. Adjusting the endpoints and midpoints in an individual channel can be useful for achieving a good color balance. 